an electric company employee uses his salary to pay an elderly woman's bill to prevent her power from being cut off. The next day, a helicopter lands in his backyard. With the first ray of sunlight on the horizon, Raymond was already awake. His eyes, marked by the exhaustion of someone who had never known the word easy, scanned the small room he shared with his wife, Kathy, and their two children. That simple house, built with his father's own hands, was all that remained of a dream that had once been much larger. The clay walls bore witness to the struggles of this hardworking man and his family. Kathy, still drowsy, felt Raymond stirring and got up. Days began early for everyone there, even for the children, who, though young, already understood that life in the northeastern backlands demanded sacrifices. The oldest, John, seven years old, helped his mother in the small backyard garden when he wasn't in school, while Maria, just three, played with the dry twigs she found scattered on the ground. Raymond headed to the kitchen, where Kathy was already organizing the little they had for breakfast. When she opened the cupboard, her heart sank. The bag of rice was empty. She didn't even think about opening the fridge. The last chicken had been slaughtered the previous week. In a quiet voice, she said, Raymond, the rice is gone and we don't have any more meat. The last chicken is gone. I don't know what we're going to do. Raymond paused, feeling the weight of his wife's words. He knew things were hard, but hearing her say it brought the reality into sharper focus. He glanced at his children, still asleep in the bedroom, and felt a mix of helplessness and frustration. He worked tirelessly, but the cruel reality was that his salary barely supported his family, especially with the debt they owed. Before his father passed away, he had used their homestead as collateral for a loan, and now every month, Raymond had to set aside part of his hard-earned money to pay it off. I know, Kathy, but today is payday. I'll buy a bag of rice and maybe a few chicks so we can start over. We'll get through this, I promise, he said, placing his calloused hand on his wife's shoulder. He tried to smile but knew the situation was far from simple. Raymond had studied hard to become an electrician and land a job with the city's energy distributor but the money wasn't enough. Even so, he refused to give up. Each day was a new battle and he was determined to fight to the end. Kathy, seeing the determination in her husband's eyes, came closer and hugged him. It was a hug filled with both gratitude and sadness. Gratitude for having such a dedicated man by her side and sadness for the endless sacrifices life demanded of him. Go with God, love. Be careful on the road, okay? We'll wait for you for dinner, she said. Raymond nodded, kissing her gently on the forehead. He put on his worn-out helmet and walked out the door. The small motorcycle parked outside was his loyal companion, despite the countless times it had let him down. But he always found a way, just as he did with everything else in life. As he started the engine, the sound of the motorcycle echoed through the homestead, mingling with the birdsong and the distant wind blowing across the backlands. Raymond knew it would be another long day. Traversing the dirt road, he glanced around at the dry northeastern landscape. That place, though harsh and unforgiving, was his home, and he would do everything to ensure his family could live there with dignity. The dirt road seemed longer that day, with dust rising at every turn Raymond made on his old motorcycle. The engine sputtered and coughed, as if it were as exhausted as he was, and as if the universe were testing his resilience. The motorcycle finally gave out, stopping in the middle of the road. Oh, come on, the man muttered, getting off the bike and lightly kicking the tire. He knew it wouldn't help, but the gesture was a frustrated attempt to vent his tension. Kneeling next to the motorcycle, he opened the small toolkit he always carried. The sun was growing stronger and sweat was already dripping down his face. Time was against him. Raymond couldn't afford to be late. He had to get to work, no matter what. After several minutes tinkering with wires in the ignition, the engine finally roared back to life. He let out a sigh of relief, but knew he couldn't waste any more time. Hopping on the bike, 
he sped up, kicking up even more dust as he went. Despite rushing as fast as the bike could take him, he arrived at work five minutes late. Hurrying into the yard, he saw the sour expression on Richard's face, his boss, and braced himself. This wouldn't be an easy day. Raymond! Richard barked, his gruff voice cutting through the air. Late again? What's your excuse this time? The bike. Raymond tried to explain, but was interrupted. I don't care! The tyrant snapped, not giving him a chance to justify himself. Get moving! The team's already heading out! You're late, you useless fool! Raymond lowered his head in a gesture of respect, but inside, he felt a bitter sting of humiliation. He wanted to confront the boss who humiliated him so often, but he had no choice. He needed the job. His family depended on it. He rushed to join his co-workers who were already preparing the equipment to replace several power poles in a part of the city. The work was grueling, but he did it with the determination of someone who knew that at the end of the month, every penny mattered. The sun was high in the sky when Raymond and the others returned to the company for lunch. He was exhausted, his entire body aching, but a piece of good news awaited him. Payday had arrived. With a faint smile, the hardworking man pulled out his cell phone. Its cracked screen made reading difficult, but he managed to open the bank app. There it was, the deposit. His heart filled with relief, but that feeling quickly turned to stark reality as he saw the automatic deduction for the homestead debt. What remained was just 40% of his salary. It was enough to buy rice, a few chicks, and pay some bills, but nothing more. Even so, Raymond smiled. At least he would have something to bring home, and that was what mattered. After lunch, as he prepared to resume work replacing power poles, Richard called him again. This time, the tone was more serious. Raymond, you're doing something different this afternoon, the boss said bluntly. You're on the power disconnection team. Too many people are behind on their bills. We need to cut their power off so these slackers learn to pay their debts. Raymond's stomach churned. He hated this part of the job. Cutting off electricity was a task that weighed heavily on his heart, especially knowing how hard life could be in the backlands. But orders were orders, and he had no choice. Understood, boss, replied the humble worker. As if things couldn't get worse, Raymond realized he'd be working with Mark, a gruff, heartless man known for his lack of empathy. Mark didn't care about leaving families in the dark. To him, it was just part of the job. In fact, he seemed to enjoy others' misfortunes. Raymond braced himself. The afternoon would be difficult. He took a deep breath, mentally preparing for what lay ahead. As he walked toward the truck where Mark was already waiting, Raymond murmured a quiet prayer, asking for strength to face the second half of the day. What hurt him most was knowing that by cutting off someone's electricity, he might leave families in situations similar to his own. But he had no choice. Life at times was relentless, and at that moment, Raymond would have to fulfill his duty even if it meant carrying yet another burden on his already overwhelmed heart. As soon as Katia's husband got into the truck, he found Mark, Marco, lighting a cigarette, filling the cabin with thick smoke. Raymond glanced discreetly at the window and started coughing, annoyed, but he knew complaining would be pointless. You better not open your mouth, Raymond, or I'll smash your face. Mark spat out between drags with an authoritative tone. Katia's husband simply nodded, swallowing the words he wanted to say. He knew arguing with Mark was useless. The man did whatever he wanted and didn't care about rules or others. And so, the afternoon began. The first stop was at the house of a single mother. Desperate, she ran toward them with a child in her arms, almost begging them not to cut off her electricity. I already paid, she cried, her trembling voice holding out a crumpled receipt. It probably hasn't been updated in the system yet. Raymond's heart clenched. He knew the woman was likely telling the truth. Mark, maybe we can wait until tomorrow, the electrician suggested, trying to avoid yet another painful scene. But Mark only let out a dry laugh, setting the ladder against the pole and preparing to do the job. If it's not in the system, it's not paid, he declared, 
disconnecting the wires without hesitation. Our job is to cut off power for defaulters, not listen to their sob stories. Raymond held the ladder, powerless to stop Mark, and felt a lump in his throat as he saw the woman's desperate gaze. She would spend the night in darkness. Every disconnection weighed heavier on Raymond's shoulders, but he was trapped, unable to change his circumstances. The entire afternoon passed in this manner. Mark always led the charge, pitiless, while Raymond held the ladder and tried to ignore the pain in the eyes of those they left without power. As the day neared its end, Mark glanced at the disconnection list with a satisfied grin, pleased to be nearing the end of the day's assignments. Just one more, he said, his voice dripping with sarcasm. A place owned by someone named Clementine. Sounds like another old hag who didn't pay her bill. Let's cut her power and call it a day. Raymond looked at the list, feeling a growing unease. He didn't know Mrs. Clementine, but just the thought of her being an elderly woman, possibly living alone, made him even more anxious. Still, Mark was eager to finish the job, and Raymond knew compassion had no place in that truck. They started the engine and headed to the last house of the day, with Kathy's husband praying silently for the day to end soon. After a few minutes, they arrived at Clementine's house, a simple yet charming home adorned with countless flower pots. Mark jumped out of the truck with his usual lack of empathy. He tossed his cigarette to the ground, crushing it with the sole of his shoe and barked. Come on, Raymond, grab the ladder. Let's finish this. Kathy's husband reluctantly obeyed. Moving slowly, he picked up the ladder, his eyes scanning the house. It was simple, but enchanting. The small porch was brimming with colorful flowers that seemed to have been nurtured with great love and care. For a moment, he imagined an elderly woman tending to everything with patience and devotion. The thought of leaving her in darkness tightened his chest. Mark, as insensitive as ever, was already preparing the equipment to cut the power when the sound of a gate creaking open broke the silence. A woman around 70 years old stepped out with a warm smile on her face. She looked at the two men, confused, and asked softly, Did my son ask you to fix something with the electricity? Marco gargled with laughter, completely indifferent to the innocence in the woman's voice. Before he could make an offensive comment, Raymond tried to explain, No, ma'am. We came for another reason. It's just that... But before Raymond could say more, Clementine interrupted, waving her hands. Ha, before anything else come in, I just made corn cake and some hot coffee. You must be tired. Marco hopped down from the ladder, as if the idea of cake was the best news of the day. Cake? Coffee? You don't have to invite me twice, ma'am. Raymond tried to politely decline. Oh, ma'am, it's really not necessary. We're here for work. But Marco slapped the back of his partner's head, laughing mockingly. Don't be stupid, man. Free food? You think I'll say no? With Clementine guiding them inside, Raymond reluctantly followed. Mark, on the other hand, walked with almost comical enthusiasm, whispering loudly enough to be heard. After I devour that cake, I'm leaving this old fool in the dark. Learn, kid, the world belongs to the smart ones. Raymond's blood boiled, but he swallowed his words. He knew that confronting Marco would only cost him dearly. Inside the house, Raymond felt an unexpected sense of peace. The small space was meticulously organized. Plants adorned every corner as if they were part of the family. Crocheted tablecloths carefully decorated the furniture. Every corner seemed to tell a story of effort and love. Please sit down. I'll just take the cake out of the oven, said Clementine, her voice soft. The smell of freshly baked cake filled the air, and Marco, without waiting, grabbed the knife and cut a massive slice, practically half the cake, filling his plate. Raymond, embarrassed, served himself a modest piece. As he ate, Raymond couldn't help but praise her. Mrs. Clementine, your cake is amazing, and your house, it's so beautiful, so well kept. The elderly woman smiled, adjusting her glasses. Ah, thank you, my son. These plants are my life, you know, and these tablecloths, I make them myself. Since I was a girl, I've always loved crafts. Every word Clementine spoke made Raymond's chest tighten. He saw in her the essence of someone who had fought her whole life to build that little haven with her own hands, a place that was her sanctuary. 
he decided to ask, concerned. Do you live here alone? Clementine nodded with a serene smile. Yes, my son lives in the city. He wants me to move there, but I just can't. This house, my husband and I built it with so much sweat. This is where my memories are. This place is my life. Raymond deeply identified with her words. He also understood the value of something built with effort and love. But before he could say more, Marco, who had already devoured almost all the cake, let out a loud burp and rudely declared, All right, snack time's over. Let's get to work. Raymond's heart sank as he heard what came next. Marco stood with a malicious grin. Mrs. Clementine, the cake was good, really, but here's some advice. You should stop making cake and worry about paying your bills. We're here to cut your power. The elderly woman froze for a moment, her face overtaken by surprise. Cut my power, but why? The tyrant didn't miss the opportunity to humiliate her. Because you're behind on payments, you old fool. Can't pay your bills? Then you'll stay in the dark. Be thankful I let you serve me that cake first. Clementine looked at Raymond, confused and frightened, unable to understand what was happening. My son, but are you sure there must be some mistake? Raymond tried to say something, but Marco grabbed his arm, forcing him to stand. Let's go, Raymond. The day's almost over. Let's cut this old hag's power and get out of here. As they walked out, Raymond felt a lump in his throat. He knew what they were about to do was wrong. But how could he stop it? Marco had the boss's backing, and if Raymond said anything, he knew he'd lose his job. But something inside Raymond told him today had to be different. Holding the ladder, he glanced back at Clementine, who stood in the doorway, clutching a crocheted tablecloth. The weight of his decision grew heavier, and Raymond knew he had to act fast. Raymond turned to Clementine, trying to find a solution. Mrs. Clementine, are you sure you didn't pay this bill? Do you have any receipt? Before she could respond, Marco cut in with an impatient tone. Stop it, Raymond. A receipt means nothing if it's not in the system. Just do your job and quit trying to be a saint. Clementine tried to intervene, her voice trembling with worry. My son will fix this. I just need a moment to talk to him. Please give me a little time. Marco let out a dry laugh. Your son? Probably another deadbeat like you, old lady. And there's no waiting. Tonight you're sleeping in the dark, and tomorrow you can sort it out. Maybe I'll come back to reconnect the power. And if I do, I'll want more cake. The elderly woman, terrified, repeated that she couldn't be without power. She grabbed an old phone and tried to call her son, but only reached his voicemail. He must be busy, but he'll fix this. Please, just give me a little more time. Marco, already impatient, huffed and turned to Raymond. Enough with this stalling. Hold the ladder, or you'll see what happens to you at the company. Raymond hesitated, looking at the ladder and then at Clementine, who seemed increasingly desperate. He knew this was wrong, but Marco kept pressuring him. Marco, we could come back tomorrow. Say we didn't have time today. By then her son will resolve it, and no one will get hurt. Clementine quickly agreed, almost pleading. My son will sort this out today. I just couldn't reach him right now. Please, sir. Marco lost his patience and shouted. Are you stupid, Raymond? This old hag is lying, just like every other freeloader. I'm cutting this power right now. End of story. Hold the ladder. Raymond's heart clenched. He looked again at Clementine, then at the phone in his hand, which he had just taken from his pocket. Taking a deep breath, he knew he was about to make a decision that would change everything. Without saying a word, he opened his bank app, found the account number for the electric bill from the list in the truck, and made the payment. Marco, realizing what Raymond was doing, was dumbfounded. Are you crazy? Paying this old hag's bill with your own money? No wonder you're a loser. The system confirmed the payment, and Clementine's debt disappeared instantly. Raymond closed the app and looked at Marco. I did what I felt was right, and I'd do it again. Clementine, overwhelmed with emotion, took Raymond's hands. My son, you didn't have to do this. You shouldn't spend your money on me. Raymond smiled gently. Mrs. Clementine, sometimes you have to do what's right, even if it costs you. Marco, furious, pointed a finger at Raymond. You're an idiot. What about when there's no food on your table? When your kids go hungry? Let's see what you'll do then, you fool. He grabbed Raymond's arm and dragged him back to the truck, not giving Clementine a chance to properly thank him. She tried asking for Raymond's address or phone number to repay the money, but Marco ignored her and sped off in the vehicle. On the drive back, Marco hurled insults at his partner. You're useless. I can't work with someone like you. 
You know what? I'm taking this to Richard. I want him to fire you. Raymond remained silent, bearing the weight of his choices without regret. He knew he had done the right thing, even if it came at a cost. But before discovering the end of this emotional story, tell me, if you were in Raymond's place, would you have paid the elderly woman's bill, even knowing that the only money you had was to put food on the table for your children? Let me know in the comments. When they arrived at the company, Marco went straight to the boss's office. Ricardo, I don't want to work with that good-for-nothing Raymond anymore. He's just a nuisance. Can you believe he paid an old hag's bill with his own money? He wanted to forgive her debts. This guy's a weakling, and you know he's useless here. Ricardo, already irritated with Raymond for other reasons, nodded in agreement. You're right, Marco. That soft heart of his is a real problem. Raymond, you're fired. Come back tomorrow to sign the paperwork. Raymond tried to explain himself, but Ricardo didn't even bother to listen. Get out of here, you piece of trash. Be thankful I'm not firing you for cause. Get lost. I'm sick of your miserable face. With a heavy heart, Raymond gathered his things and left the company. As he rode his motorcycle back home, tears streamed down his face. He knew he had lost his job, but not his self-respect. The night ahead would be long, but Raymond felt no regret. He had done what he believed was right, and in that moment, that was all that mattered. With a heavy heart, the man finally arrived home. Kathy was waiting at the door, her eyes filled with worry. Raymond, didn't you bring any food? What happened? Didn't you get paid yet? She asked, concerned. The man looked at his wife, his eyes brimming with tears. Kathy, let's talk in the bedroom. I don't want the kids to hear this right now. Once in the privacy of their room, he broke down, sobbing like a child. Between his sobs, he explained everything that had happened. How he received his salary, how the debt for the homestead was deducted, and how he had planned to buy the essentials for the family. But then, Seeing an elderly woman in despair, he decided to use his money to pay her bill, acting without thinking about the consequences. At that moment, Kathy, I could only think about her pain, about what that night without electricity would be like for her. I couldn't let that happen. But now we're in this situation, and worse, Marco reported me to Ricardo and I was fired. Kathy's heart ached seeing her husband suffering. She hugged him tightly and, with the serenity that only she had, said, My love, you did what you thought was right. That's what matters most. We've always found a way, and we'll find another now. Maybe deep down it's even good that you left that job. You suffered so much there. It was so humiliating. Raymond took a deep breath and wiped his tears, trying to gather his strength. Soon, Kathy called the children, and with Raymond by her side, explained that the family was about to face tough times but together, they would overcome. They embraced, united by love and hope. That night, Kathy managed to borrow a chicken from a neighbor and prepared a simple but affectionate meal. Raymond ate silently, his mind weighed down by worry. How would he support his family? How would he pay the bills and keep the homestead? In bed, lying beside his wife, Raymond's head felt like it weighed a ton. He knew the next day would be tough. He would have to go to the company to finalize his termination, and he had no idea how to start over. Early the next morning, Raymond woke up feeling discouraged and told his wife he would walk to the company to save the little fuel left in his motorcycle. But when he opened the door, something unexpected happened. A noise from the sky drew everyone's attention. The sound of helicopter blades cutting through the air stirred the dust in the yard. Raymond looked up and saw a helicopter descending slowly. His heart raced as he recognized the emblem on the side, the logo of the energy company where he worked. Kathy and the children came closer, as surprised as Raymond. The helicopter landed and out stepped none other than Mrs. Clementine, accompanied by an elegant, youthful-looking man. Before Raymond could make sense of what was happening, Clementine pointed at him and said, it's him, my son. He's the kind-hearted employee who paid my electricity bill. The elegant man approached with a smile. Raymond, pleasure to meet you. I'm Alexander Andrades. Raymond and Kathy were speechless. They both knew who Alexander Andrades was, the owner of the energy company 
a renowned billionaire. The electrician was confused. How could this humble elderly woman, who seemed unable to pay her electric bill, be the mother of such a powerful magnate? May I come in? Clementine asked, her usual kindness evident. Raymond, still in shock, nodded. Of course, but I'm sorry, Mrs. Clementine. We have nothing to offer you today. Times are tough. The elderly woman smiled, touching his arm. Don't worry about that, Raymond. What you've done for me already shows the kind of person you are. She sat down and began to explain. I knew you used your paycheck to help me. My son heard the story and wanted to come in person. You did what no one else would have done, young man. Raymond, still not fully understanding, looked at Alexander, who continued. My mother has always been a humble woman. Although I built this company and have plenty of money today, she never wanted to leave the house she built with my father. That house is her whole world and, in a way, mine too, since I grew up there. She travels with me sometimes, but she always returns to that little home. Alexander chuckled softly and continued. But something went wrong in the system I set up to automatically pay the electric bill for that house. And as you know, my mother's name ended up on the list of delinquent accounts. Such a small thing slipped through unnoticed. And look at the irony. The owner of the largest energy distributor nearly had his mother's power cut off for non-payment. Before he could continue, Kathy, her heart filled with emotion and her voice trembling, interrupted. My husband was fired because of this. He suffered so much humiliation in that place. Ricardo, his boss, and Marco, his co-worker, treated him as if he were worthless. The billionaire shook his head, visibly disappointed. I'm aware of this. In fact, that Marco treated my mother like garbage. I've always been against this kind of behavior in my company. And that's exactly why I landed my helicopter here. We're going to fix this right now. He turned to Raymond. Come with me in the helicopter. We'll resolve this once and for all. Raymond hesitated for a moment, but Clementine smiled at him. Trust him, my boy. He knows what he's doing. Kathy held her husband's hand. Go, Raymond. I know God is putting something good in our path. Raymond nodded and climbed into the helicopter alongside Alexander and Clementine. Before taking off, Alexander turned to Kathy and said, We'll bring food for you and your children. Wait for us. The helicopter rose, taking Raymond toward a future he could never have imagined. A few minutes later, the helicopter landed in the company yard. Curious employees began to gather, watching from afar as Ricardo, accompanied by Marco, quickly approached. Both were certain that Alexander Andrades, the company owner himself, had arrived, and they prepared to flatter him. When the helicopter door opened, however, the surprise was enormous. Raymond stepped out first, followed by Clementine and finally Alexander. Ricardo, with a nervous smile, called out loudly, What is this man doing in your helicopter, Mr. Andrades? The response came in an authoritative tone that made Ricardo swallow hard. I brought him here myself. Any problem with that? Ricardo felt his knees tremble. Beside him, Marco remained silent, but his expression betrayed his discomfort. When he saw Clementine stepping out after Alexander, the heartless electrician realized things were about to get much worse. The elderly woman approached her son and whispered something in his ear. Alexander gave Marco a piercing look, crossing his arms. Ah, uh, so you're the infamous Marco. Good thing you're here. You need to hear this. Alexander raised his voice, calling all the employees to gather around. Once a small crowd had formed near the helicopter, he began. I want to take this opportunity with everyone here to clarify a few things. What is the motto of this company? Isn't it to deliver energy with dignity and respect to those most in need? Isn't it to treat people with humanity? Ricardo nodded, stammering. Ye yes, sir, of course it is. It's always been. Alexander stepped forward, staring directly at him. Then explain to me, Ricardo. Why am I finding out that, under your supervision, unnecessary power disconnections have taken place? Why weren't my directives to seek agreements before cutting power followed? Since when do I allow clients or employees to be humiliated in this company? Ricardo tried to justify himself. I... I was just thinking about the company's profits, sir. Isn't that what we're here for? Alexander shook his head, disappointed. Profit without respect has no value. You humiliated humble clients, treated people like numbers, and worst of all, you fired an exemplary employee who, with the little he had, was able to help my mother. Ricardo began to plead. 
Mr. Alexander, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. I can change. But the decision had already been made. You're fired, Ricardo. And don't bother arguing. Your values don't align with those of this company. Before the now former general manager could say another word, Alexander turned to Marco. And you? How dare you treat my mother that way? Your insensitivity and lack of respect have no place here. From today, you are out of the company. And I'll make sure you never work as an electrician again. Marco tried to defend himself, but the words wouldn't come. He knew his behavior had sealed his fate. With both now dismissed, Alexander turned to Raymond, who was still in shock watching the scene. And now, I want to introduce everyone to the new manager of this company, Raymond. The silence was broken by applause. Raymond, incredulous, looked at Clementine and Alexander. I... I don't know if I deserve this. Clementine, with a gentle smile, replied. You do, Raymond. And do you know why? Because you did what was right without expecting anything in return. That is true wealth of character. The co-workers, well aware of Raymond's dedication and kindness, celebrated his promotion enthusiastically. Alexander continued. And that's not all. I'm paying off the debt on your homestead. It now officially belongs to you and your family. Also, here's the key to a new motorcycle. You deserve it, Raymond. Raymond felt his eyes fill with tears. He thought of his wife and children, who could now enjoy a more dignified life. Alexander took the opportunity to announce a new company policy. We will create an assistance program for clients in vulnerable situations. They will have the chance to renegotiate debts or, in extreme cases, receive subsidies. Because this is the mission of this company. To deliver energy, yes, but with humanity and respect. When everything was over, Raymond returned home with Alexander and Clementine, bringing not only food, as Alexander had promised, but also the certainty that his life was changing for the better. Upon arriving, Kathy and the children greeted him with hugs and smiles. That day, Raymond realized that kindness and honesty always find a way to prevail, even in the hardest times. And so, with his family by his side, Raymond began a new chapter in his life, grateful for having followed his heart and never giving up on doing good. And if you like this story, the next video appearing on your screen is surely going to move you too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a like, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Big hugs, and see you in the next heartwarming story.